Since 1974, Robin Sage, the culmination exercise for the SFQC, has been a litmus test for soldiers striving to earn the coveted Green Beret. Before 1974, similar exercises were held under the name Devil's Arrow, Swift Strike, and Guerrilla USA. During Robin Sage, held across 15 rural North Carolina counties, soldiers put all of the skills they learned throughout the SFQC to the test in an unconventional warfare training exercise. The exercise, broken into two phases, puts students on their first SVOTA. The SVOTA is trained, advised, and mentored throughout the exercise, from mission receipt through planning and infiltration. During the first week, the students are taught the necessary skills to survive and succeed in a UW environment using the small group instruction teaching method. The remaining three weeks focus on their planning and application during Robin Sage. The students are placed into an environment of political instability characterized by armed conflict to force soldiers to exercise individual and collective problem solving. A key to the success of the Robin Sage training is its real-world feel through the use of guerrilla forces. The SPOTA must assess the combat effectiveness of the G-forces, then trains them in basic individual tasks from each of the MOSs as well as collective tasks in basic small unit tactics, while remaining responsive to asymmetrical challenges. Just as language plays a key role in all other phases of the pipeline, language skills will be put to the test during Robin Sage. During this training, the SPOTA must demonstrate its knowledge of UW doctrine and operational techniques. On the last day of isolation, the detachment presents its plan to the battalion command and staff. This plan explains the ways the commander intends to execute the mission. The next day, the students make an airborne infiltration into the fictitious country of Pineland. They contact guerrilla forces to initiate Robin Sage. Students accomplish their tasks of training, advising, and assisting the guerrillas. The training educates the guerrillas in various specialties, including weapons, communications, medical, and demolitions. The training is designed to enable the guerrillas to begin liberating their country from oppression. It is the last portion of the Special Forces Qualification course before they receive their Green Berets. Robin Sage involves approximately 100 Special Forces students, 100 counterinsurgent personnel, OPFR, 200 guerrilla personnel, 40 auxiliary personnel, and 50 cadres. The local communities of North Carolina also participate in the exercise by role-playing as citizens of Pineland. The exercise is conducted in approximately 50,000 square miles, 130,000 square kilometers, of North Carolina. Many of the OPFR and guerrilla personnel are North Carolina residents and are paid for their participation. The role of the guerrilla chief, G Chief, is sometimes played by a retired Green Beret. During the summer Robin Sage exercises, Army ROTC cadets from the Citadel and cadets from the United States Military Academy act as guerrilla fighters. 2002 Death During Robin Sage during a Robin Sage exercise on February 23, 2002, Moore County Deputy Sheriff Randall Butler shot and killed 1st Lieutenant Talis Tomini, 31, wounded Staff Sergeant Stephen Phelps, 25, and detained civilian volunteer Charles Lieber. While on patrol, Deputy Butler pulled over the three exercise participants after he determined their behavior indicated they might be searching for robbery targets. During the roadside investigation, Lieber, the driver of the pickup truck, was led by Butler to Butler's patrol cruiser for questioning. After leaving Lieber in his patrol car, Butler led Tomini from the pickup passenger seat to the truck bed where Phelps was riding. Butler wished to inspect a bag Tomini possessed containing Tomini's M4 service rifle. Butler later admitted he did not know the weapon at this point because the compartment containing the rifle remained unopened. The soldiers, under the assumption Butler was aware of the ongoing Robin Sage training, attempted to bribe him with Don, Pineland currency, which looks similar to Monopoly money. Butler tussled with Tomini for the bag, pushed Tomini away, then threw the bag to the side. Tomini backed up and raised his hands, and, according to court documents, Tomini did not bump Butler or reach for Butler's service weapon. 
Butler reholstered his service pistol and sprayed Tomini in the eyes with pepper spray until the pepper spray appeared to run out, which caused Tomini to scream and rub his eyes with his hands. Phelps moved from his position in the pickup truck's bed, grabbed the bag with Tomini's service rifle, and ran for cover in the direction of the woods. Deputy Butler shot Tomini, turned, and shot the fleeing Phelps who had, after hearing the shots fired at Tomini, turned suddenly, and due to the wet pavement slipped and fell to his hands and knees. Phelps did not make any attempts to open the bag and was shot by Butler twice. According to Butler's counsel, he warned Phelps to show his hands, but this was contested. Before the incident, there was confidence within the military hierarchy all North Carolina law enforcement officials were familiar with the exercise. Press releases are now issued before an exercise commences, and law enforcement officials participating in the training are required to wear a distinctive uniform. On October 27, 2009, a federal jury in Greensboro, North Carolina, awarded $750,000 to Phelps after he sued Butler and the Moore County Sheriff's Office. Tomini's estate settled out of court with the Sheriff's Office. Jurors said they did not believe portions of Butler's testimony. Butler sued the U.S. government for $5 million for emotional distress and post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of shooting Tomini and Phelps, the case was dismissed.